Hi everyone, welcome back to Faith in Flower. This is Robin and this week I have another everyday homemaking video for you to inspire you for your week ahead. If you live here in the United States, you might be getting ready to celebrate 4th of July. So I want to wish you a happy 4th and I hope that you have a really nice time with your friends and family this weekend. Whatever your week ahead brings, I hope that watching today's video will give you a little bit of motivation in whatever it is that you need to accomplish this week. Every week brings new and different things and a lot of things that we just repeat over and over again. Those repeated tasks are not destined to become mundane things to check off your list. They can sometimes be rituals that you really enjoy. So for those of you that are familiar with our family, you'll know that our son has celiac disease, so we mostly eat gluten-free. But when it comes to bread, I generally buy his bread because there are particular ones that he likes. And then I try to make bread for Patrick and I. I've been getting back into making sourdough bread, which is really fun, but it can be a little bit time consuming and the results for me are still a little bit inconsistent. So when I need a loaf of bread, I often revert to my bread making machine and it is very reliable and turns out a really delicious loaf every time. And I will put the recipes for the breads that I made this week down in the description box in case you're looking for some new ones. And if you are a fan of my gluten-free recipes, make sure you watch till the end of the video because I've got a great one that we tried out this week. I'm always looking for new ways to use our sourdough starter, so this week I tried a sourdough sandwich loaf. I've seen many recipes circulating around on YouTube and in other places online, so I thought I'd give that a try this week, and it was pretty good. <laughs> it's less work for sure, and I was attracted to that aspect, but I have to say mine came out a little on the dry side, so I probably just need to work on this to perfect it a little bit more. It turned out to be great for things like grilled sandwiches and French toast, so it definitely did not go to waste. And any day that I can get my hands in dough and play with that is a good one. Also this week, I tried a couple of DIY projects using Rub and Buff. So several of you had suggested this for the mirror in our hallway and also for Peyton's furniture. So I ordered some and thought I'd give that a try and it was fun, <laughs> but you will have to see the mixed results that I achieved. these three from Amazon. So it's pewter, silver leaf, and ebony. And I decided to give the silver leaf a try on the mirror. We have a lot of silver fixtures and I thought that that would work really well, especially with the knobs that are on the dresser that we put into the entryway. I did a little research on the best way to apply and the information that I got was a little bit mixed. Some people said to apply it with a cloth and others said use a brush and then, you know, sort of buff it with a cloth. So that's what I decided to do on the mirror. And it had really great coverage right off the bat. So I was curious to see what it was gonna be like once you buff it up. As you can see, it's a little bit dull going on, but wait till you see what happens. 
I love watching different DIY videos on YouTube and also HTV and Rub and Buff is something that has been out there for a little while now and everybody is, you know, singing its praises. So I was really excited to give it a try and I will have to say that it's a really easy project. It's not as messy as spray painting or something like that and I've done a lot of that in the past. So it was fun to get a different product and try a different way of transforming this mirror. This was my favorite part. Buffing it afterwards just helps bring out all of the shine and I was just so impressed with the transformation. I didn't even mind that there was a tiny bit of gold peeking through here and there. It just gave a little bit more interest to the mirror and I think if I were to do a second coat I could get even more coverage but like I said I really liked it. But I did want to add a little more dimension, so I had bought this brush set at Walmart and I thought I would use a little bit of the ebony to sort of give it an antique look. First I used the really small brush to get into some of the grooves and I just painted a little bit on and then buffed most of it out just so that those lines would show up a little bit more and like I said, give the mirror a little bit more depth. this fan brush to just feather on just a little bit of the ebony and then buff it out again to give it a little bit more of an antiqued finish. With the success of the mirror, I felt like putting a little rub and buff on the knobs on Peyton's furniture would be a great idea. I decided to go with the pewter and right away I could tell that it wasn't going on quite as well as when I used the silver on the mirror, but I was determined that it was going to work. So I took all of the knobs off one of his dressers, actually it's the armoire, and thought I would transform them and then put them back on and see how I liked it on the furniture.
when it came to buffing them, a lot of the rub and buff was removed, even though it was very gentle, and I just felt like it wasn't adhering well to these knobs. So <laughs> I used some mineral spirits to remove it. That's one of the very best things about this rub and buff is that if you mess up or you don't like it, you can totally take it off with some mineral spirits in no time. So I did that and then I thought I'd give the ebony a try and it actually initially went on really well. This time I tried applying it with a cloth and it looked great, <laughs> but it never seemed to really dry and when I buffed it, it it started to come off as well. So what did I do? I removed it all with some mineral spirits and we went back to the original knobs, which I think looks better anyway, because I'm not planning on painting the rest of his furniture anytime soon. And then after living with the mirror in the entryway for a few days, I realized that I just didn't really like it. <laughs> I think that the mirror itself turned out great, but I just don't think that it gave the right contrast. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it looked a little flat against the white walls. So I thought, why not try some ebony? <laughs> that would give me the perfect contrast. It would match the dresser. A lot of you had suggested that I paint or use rub and buff to make it black. I agreed. <laughs> the problem is I think you need to remove the first layer of rub and buff before trying a different color. And so I did not get good results at all. <laughs> I tried a cloth initially and then I tried painting it on. And as you can see, as soon as I started buffing, it was removing the silver and the gold was beginning to show again. So determined to make it work, I tried for a few more minutes and then I realized that I just needed to probably strip it down with mineral spirits and start over. It's a little bit messy, but Mineral Spirits just takes it right down to the original finish. And once I removed most of the rub and buff, I decided that I really liked it gold. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it this way for a while. And all was not lost because some of the silver and even the ebony was left behind. And so it gave a little bit more depth to this mirror, which was a little flat to start. And it sort of toned down the gold a bit. So to me, it's a more antiqued gold look. And I have a lot of other gold frames, which I'm probably gonna use around the house. So I think that the mixed metal situation is going to look good in the end. And if I really don't like it, I can always take it down and spray paint it black later, but we're gonna live with it this way for a while. I hope you got a good laugh over this. I know Patrick did, and I know I'm not the only one. So cheer me up by leaving your funny failed DIY stories down in the comment section. previous video, I showed you guys how I used a magic eraser to get rid of a lot of the stains from Peyton's bathtub. However, there are some persistent ones, and so a lot of you had suggested a product that I've seen lots of times lately called the Pink Stuff, and I was in Home Depot, saw it on a big display and grabbed some, and thought that I would give it a try on these stains. to thank you for recommending this product if you did so. It really did have good results. It wasn't perfect, but it did help remove more of those stains. I like that it doesn't have a strong smell and it's 99% natural ingredients. So I would recommend it. I mentioned earlier 
earlier that Peyton is on a gluten-free diet, but we also tried to avoid soy for him. So I've been relying on this mayonnaise from Trader Joe's, which doesn't have any soybean oil. I'm almost out and our local Trader Joe's has not carried it for a couple of months now. The only alternative I can find anywhere is this one by Primal Kitchen, which is made with avocado oil and no added soybean oil, and it's outrageously expensive. So I pulled out my Julia Child cookbook and found the mayonnaise recipe. I used to make my own mayonnaise all the time. It's actually quite easy to do. So because I can't buy anything that will be safe for Peyton, I am going to be making mayonnaise this week. Mayonnaise is really very simple and has just a few ingredients and so it's very easy to make, especially when you use your blender. <laughs> Even Julia Child cautions against using the blender, however, because a lot of it gets stuck in the bottom of the blender. So if you don't mind taking the extra time to scrape it out, <laughs> I definitely recommend that method because it's very foolproof and easy. Lost again, going back around Dreaming of a time when I get things right Lost in the shadows of a million stars Shouldn't they enlighten my near and far? Shouldn't they at all just tell me where you are? Send a prayer if I'm out that I really wanted to accomplish this week was to get this bookcase in order. I still have boxes that needed to be unpacked. I need to do some decluttering and I want to decorate or style the bookshelf. Ew, there's a spider up here. Spiders love clutter, by the way. <laughs> we have a very strict capture and release policy in our home when it comes to insects, and I'm fine with that as long as the guys are willing to deal with it. up a few boxes that I'm not quite willing to part with just yet. We will probably do some built-ins in our living room at some point and we might have some more storage so I'm deferring the decision on those but I still have a huge pile of books to go through and some are going to need to be donated. Right now I don't have any storage space for my cookbooks in the kitchen so I wanted to designate a shelf for those in here.
after that, I just started sorting into different piles so I would know what was gonna stay on the shelf, what was gonna get stored, and what was gonna get donated. I'll admit that I had been procrastinating on this because I knew it was going to take some time and a lot of decisions, but it was so worth it because now the boxes are gone, the shelves aren't just crammed with books, they are organized and there's even space for some of our keepsakes. Back in the kitchen, there was just a little bit of reorganizing that I had planned to do for this week. I realized after using the kitchen for a while that having our everyday plates in this cabinet in the corner was just a little bit awkward. So I thought that I could move them to a drawer and actually that was my original plan. So I'm gonna try that out. And in the drawers, I need to make room. So I'm going to take a few things out of different drawers, decide what I wanna put in that upper corner cabinet and and get the plates into this drawer. A lot of the items from these drawers are actually being washed in the dishwasher as I'm doing this, which made it even easier. So I didn't have a ton of different things to move around, but I had enough to know where I needed to allocate space and I was able to get this done fairly quickly. decided to relocate the Tupperware into this upper cabinet. It's lightweight and I'm not grabbing for it every day, but I also put some items that I use frequently but that have handles so they're easy to grasp. And so I'm putting my mixing bowls and measuring cups up here and there was just enough space left over for my grading tools. able to find space for all of the other items in places that make sense and now we have the plates and bowls and a couple other little serving things right here underneath the utensil drawer so I think this is going to be so much easier for us. I promised you a delicious gluten-free recipe and this one is not going to disappoint plus it's a lot of fun. This is for gluten-free flour tortillas. Our family loves Taco Tuesdays, or really tacos any day. <laughs> and we generally use the corn tortillas because they're gluten-free. I can buy them from the store and they're easy and that's fine. But I wanted to switch things up a little bit and give this a try. Patrick really loves flour tortillas and Peyton hasn't had flour tortillas in quite a while. Again, I have to be careful with the soy. Some of the ones on the market contain different types of soy, either flour or oil. And another thing that we've noticed is that lots of times they don't stay pliable after a short period of time. So I found several recipes and this one had great reviews.
hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. I hope that it gave you a little bit of motivation and inspiration for your homemaking week ahead. Don't forget to check out the recipes in the description box below. And I want to say thank you for watching all the way until the end. I really appreciate you spending your time with me here today. I look forward to talking with you in the comments, so make sure you leave one below, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a wonderful week.